alfalfa, New York State's dominant forage crop. 930,000 acres are committed to this producer of high-protein hay. That adds up to an average of two and a half million tons of feed per year. Alfalfa is an essential food source for livestock and is crucial for the maintenance of healthy and productive dairy cattle, New York State's leading agricultural commodity. Efficient management is the key to healthy, high-yielding alfalfa. This includes such practices as fertilization based on soil tests, the early detection of pests and diseases, and the proper timing of harvest. The focus of this program is alfalfa diseases. In it, you will learn how to detect and manage several of the most important alfalfa diseases in New York State today. Almost every alfalfa field has some form of disease. Disease development can vary from minor, resulting in slight yield reduction, to severe, resulting in plant death and a shortening of productive stand life. There are three major groups of diseases which affect alfalfa. These are vascular wilts, root crown and stem rots, and leaf and stem blights. Vascular wilt diseases pose the greatest threat to alfalfa yields and stand survival. These diseases develop when the water conducting or vascular tissues of alfalfa plants become invaded by plant pathogens and these tissues become plugged. This results in the development of water shortage type of symptoms in the plants, such as yellowing, wilting, and eventual death of these plants. Among the vascular wilts affecting New York alfalfa today, Verticillium wilt is the most common and damaging. It appears in stands two years old and older and becomes more obvious in second and third cuttings. The first symptom you'll observe is an apparent water shortage with reversible wilting of upper leaflets. Upper leaflets then start to yellow at the tips. As the water deprived leaflets begin to die, they become curled and twisted and may take on a slight tan to pink coloration while the stems remain green. Advanced infections are associated with a browning of the vascular tissues. You can see a reddish brown ring when you view the stems and roots in cross section. Plants infected with verticillium wilt die gradually. Regrowth that appears to be healthy can often be observed from wilted plants that have been cut. However, the regrowth is often bushy and stunted. Wilt symptoms reappear by the time the plants have produced eight to 10 inches of new growth. This is the time you can most easily see the disease on scattered plants in a field. When scouting for verticillium wilt, the key things to look for are scattered plants in a field showing signs of water shortage. On individual plants, look for wilted, yellowed upper leaflets dead, twisted leaves clinging to green stems, a browning of vascular tissues, and stunted regrowth. The second major disease group, root crown and stem rots, is diverse, but these diseases can be considered together because each one interferes with the uptake and movement of water and nutrients from the roots into the shoots. As you might expect, this group of diseases induces symptoms somewhat similar to those of vascular wilts. Infected plants are often yellowed, weakened, and stunted, and they yield progressively less forage. The most common and important diseases in this group are Phytophthora root rot, crown rot, anthracnose, and sclerotinia crown and stem rot. Phytophthora root rot is caused by a fungus common to most New York State soils where it exists in a resting stage ready to infect new seedlings. It can also infect established stands with excess soil moisture in low areas and along drainage patterns. This is because the roots are infected by fungal spores that swim through films of water. The fungus infects root hairs and lateral roots two to eight inches below the soil surface and then moves into the main taproot. 
Destruction of tissues in the main taproot interferes with the movement of water and nutrients into the shoots. To check for Phytophthora root rot, dig up plants with a narrow spade. It's important to get as much of the taproot as possible for an accurate diagnosis. Check the root for yellow-brown lesions, dead root tips, an absence of nodules, and large dead areas in the taproot. Often, infected taproots will break off at the juncture of healthy and rotted tissue as plants are pulled up. When scouting for Phytophthora root rot, the key things to look for are patches of yellowed, stunted, and dying plants corresponding to low spots and drainage patterns in a field. On individual plants, look for yellowed, stunted shoots, yellow-brown lesions on roots that expand to rot large portions of the taproot, and a well-defined juncture between rotted and healthy taproot tissues. Crown rot is a common disorder of alfalfa. It is caused by a complex of plant stresses, including a number of pathogenic microorganisms. It occurs in alfalfa stands of any age, but is most typically encountered in stands three years old or older. Stresses such as drought stress, flooding, nutrient deficiencies, and wounds created by insects or mechanical damage determine the extent to which this disease develops in a stand of alfalfa. Crown rot tends to be observed in clumps of plants scattered in a field. Above ground symptoms include stunting, wilting, and eventual death of shoots. Crown rot can be detected by digging plants up with as much of the root as possible and then sectioning through the crown area with a knife. If the disease is present, you should see a V-shaped dead area in the crown. Most plants in older stands exhibit some crown rot, but only severe crown rot development is associated with crop losses. When scouting for crown rot, the key things to look for are scattered clumps of stunted plants in older stands that are stressed. On individual plants, look for yellowed, stunted, and dead shoots and V-shaped dead areas in the crowns. Anthracnose, another fungal disease, is the last root and stem disease that we will discuss. It is most active in warm environments and is most destructive, therefore, in the Hudson River Valley section of New York State, the warmest area of the state. It can occur statewide, however, in warmer than normal summers. You can detect anthracnose by looking for scattered plants in a field showing individual dying shoots. This may be more pronounced in your field than it is in this experimental plot. The fungus infects lower portions of stems during warm, wet weather, forming diamond-shaped lesions. These lesions progress until they girdle the stem. Therefore, water and nutrients are blocked first to one side of the stems, and a shepherd's crook or downward turning of the stem tips often develops before the shoot dies completely. Anthracnose also has a crown rot phase. You can identify it by breaking off the base of the stem and looking for a characteristic bluish-black color in the crown. This can easily be distinguished from the more commonly encountered reddish-brown discoloration of Fusarium or Rhizoctonia crown rots. When scouting for anthracnose, the key things to look for are scattered plants in a field with individual dying shoots. On individual plants, look for bleached shoots with shepherd's crooks at the stem tips diamond-shaped lesions on lower stems, and a bluish-black discoloration of the crowns. There's an additional disease in this group, which we'll mention very briefly. Crop losses from sclerotinia crown and stem rot have been slight to date, but it appears to be increasing and has a destructive potential. Sclerotinia crown and stem rot attacks the lower portion of alfalfa plants, so look for scattered clumps of plants with weak, wilting shoots. Associated with this yellowing and wilting, look for a white mold at the base of stems. In addition, the survival structures of the fungus, tiny black pellet-shaped sclerotia, can also be found in or on rotted stems and crowns.
third and often ignored group of alfalfa diseases is the leaf and stem blights. Several foliar diseases are common in New York State alfalfa. These include spring black stem and leaf spot. Leptospherulina leaf spot. Common leaf spot. And stemphilium leaf spot. Color picture sheets to help identify foliar diseases are available through your local office of Cornell Cooperative Extension. But be aware that leaf spots occur as a disease complex, and a laboratory diagnosis is often necessary to determine what individual diseases are involved. So far, you've seen how to detect and identify several of the most common and serious diseases of alfalfa in New York State. These are important steps toward the efficient management of your standing and future alfalfa crops. But there's more that you can do. Management practices can limit the development and impact of diseases. The most important way to manage some of the diseases we've discussed is by planting disease-resistant varieties. In fact, all alfalfa seeded in New York State should have at least a moderate level of resistance to verticillium wilt. Any field subject to waterlogged conditions should be seeded with varieties resistant to Phytophthora root rot, and fields in the warmer production areas or with a history of anthracnose should be seeded to anthracnose resistant varieties. Another important practice is the selection of suitable sites for growing alfalfa. For example, by avoiding poorly drained fields, you can reduce stand losses from Phytophthora root rot and other soil-borne diseases. Using an appropriate cropping sequence is also important. It's always best to avoid planting alfalfa in fields recently cropped to legumes. But where diseases such as verticillium wilt or sclerotinia crown and stem rot have occurred, it's critical to rotate the fields with three or more years of a cereal crop following deep plowing of the forage crop residue. Good management also includes good seedbed preparation, weed control, adjustment of pH to 6.5 or above, and fertilization based on a soil test. Fall establishment is discouraged because of increased problems with sclerotinia crown and stem rot and insufficient time to accumulate root carbohydrates necessary for winter survival. Always try to harvest alfalfa when the crop is dry and harvest young fields before those that are older or known to be diseased. Debris should be removed from equipment before moving it out of fields known to be infested with verticillium wilt, anthracnose, or sclerotinia crown and stem rot. The most critical factor in stand management is a harvest schedule which allows for replenishment of root reserve carbohydrates. Vigorous, non-stressed plants are best able to resist disease development. I hope that you've gained an appreciation for the importance of disease scouting to alfalfa management. For more information on alfalfa diseases and their management, we suggest that you contact your local Cornell Cooperative Extension office.